Stephen Parks, I'm the Director of Law Enforcement Training here at the College of Mainland. I want to introduce uh, some of the people who are here to talk and be here for the graduation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Bob Williamson. Uh, he's with the now with the uh, Galveston County Sheriff's Department. He was the immediate past Director of Law Enforcement Training here at the College of Mainland. He also do some instructing here and been very beneficial in that regard. Also, it's uh, Alan Callender, Sergeant, he's uh, with the Department of Public Safety for a number of years. He's now uh, a mission Texas Ranger uh, and he's also been very active in our teaching here and helping us do some coordinating. And there's Sergeant Schultz here also today. He's uh, on duty right now, I guess. So if you, you see him scoot out, that's because his pager went off and he has to <laughs> be someplace. Uh, and, and, uh, on duty. Uh, I know that, that a couple, uh, Bob Winson, may want to say some things, and also uh, Sergeant Callum. I'd like to welcome y'all here. I'll make some remarks, and I know there's somebody from the academy that's going to make some remarks, but I'd like to ask Bob Williamson if he'd like to, to step up and, and make some comments concerning this academy and the law enforcement training center as a whole here at the College of Mining. Thank you, Steve. These young people have just completed close to a year's training. Going through a single semester daytime academy has its own level of stress and problem. But when you take that and you stretch it out for close to a year, you're really impacting the students' lives and you're impacting the lives of their family. So it takes a special type of discipline for an individual to subject themselves to that type of stress, that type of strain and to be able to dedicate themselves to learning, studying, and still maintain a family life. I don't know how many times they have thanked you, but on behalf of the staff, and Mr. Pardon here, and the college, we'd like to thank you for the support that you've shown, because if you hadn't shown them that support, I doubt seriously many of them would be here tonight. Thank you very much. best know me as the old grouch. <laughs> First time they met me, with the exception of one of them that met me previously, I walked in the classroom and made everybody stand up, and one young man was late coming in, he dropped 50 push-ups and was being late. That was my introduction to them. <laughs> you know, the last year I've kept their attention for some reason. I don't know whether it was a threat of push-ups or a threat that I was just going to chew on for being late to my class. They did a good job, proud of And I know they're going to make a good peace officer. I know you're going to be just as proud of them as we are. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I want to talk to y'all about a little bit of something that they, they're going to go through what y'all are going to go through is being friends and family. You'll see a change once they, they get a job as law enforcement. You'll see a change come over them. Uh, when they first get started, they'll want to talk to you about the things that they see out there every day. And this may go on for about six months. I kind of talked to them about, about this last week. Then there's going to get to the point where they won't talk to you and tell you what's going on. Whether your family or friends, wife, mother, father, whatever. And you cannot let them get by with doing this. What happens, they're trying to protect you from the things that they see out there and the worst that society has to offer that they'll be seeing on a daily basis. Uh, first, it's going to be real exciting to them. And then they become a little jaded by seeing it all the time. So you can't let them get by without talking to you. You know, insist that they tell you 
maybe not all the gruesome details and so forth, but if they bottle it up inside, they'll just get more and more withdrawn from the family and in the family circle. And this is something that you as cadets and new police officers are going to have to remember also. It will happen to you. It happens to every police officer. You don't want your family involved in what you're going through out there on a daily basis because, you know, generally speaking, most of you think the world is a great, big, beautiful place. Well, it is overall. But what you're going to be seeing is, is like an isolated type situation because that's what your job is. There's nothing that's, that's more pleasing than being a police officer, let me tell you. It's, it's the most fun job in the world because it's new every day. And if they can keep this enthusiasm going and, and want to help people, that's what being a police officer is, is helping people, being people helping oriented. And every one of them assures me that this is what they like to do, is help people. So they'll be doing a lot of people helping in the years to come. And it's whether they're locking them up, putting them in jail, or working a wreck, or changing the flat tire, or and CPS because of child abuse or what have you, that they're going to see these things. It has a tendency to make them lock job. So don't let them get by with it. That's all I can tell you. Try to sit down and, and, and talk with them and keep them enthusiastic about doing the job. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Andy Falls, who always says, oh, that's fun, let's do it again. <laughs> Michael Bailey, who didn't say a lot, but when he did, he always ended it with, yeah. <laughs> he was also our sharpshooter. James Jones, who always said, well, when I worked at TDC, we did it like this. <laughs> Bruce Wimberly, we call him Mr. Pager. And he always kept us laughing at times when our, tents, when our attention levels required a little balance. <laughs> and I was affectionately known as Mama Leva. <laughs> First of all, I would I'd like to thank God for allowing us to be here today and bringing our families together during this special occasion. Amen. On behalf of the class of 99, we would like to take this time to thank all of our family, friends, and everyone who is present here today at our graduation ceremony. We would like to thank you all for your support and encouragement. We've had a full and sometimes very challenging and overwhelming year. And I think it was worth it all for us to get to this point in our careers. We would not have made it this far without support of our instructors, the staff, and our director, Mr. Parton. We know there are times when he didn't think we were going to make it and when we really worked his last nerve. But his guidance and support helped us to overcome this very important first step of law enforcement. And we appreciate your tough love. We appreciate the times that all instructors put into this academy. And we would like to acknowledge a few of them that made a major impact in our lives and whom we will never forget. Our firearm instructors who are not here today are Range Master Charlie Jackson, Officer Lim Powell, and Officer Dennis Mason. We learned very quickly what the true meaning of assume the thinking position. Some, some of us more than others. We also have keep the muzzle down range etched across the back of some of our heads. And when he said keep the muzzle down range, he meant keep the muzzle down range. Okay. 
And another one was, if you do that again, you're going to run laps around my parking lot. And the parking lot was pretty big. We'd also like to thank Trooper Reddick, who had the great pleasure, I'm convinced, of doing our pepper spray training. We experienced firsthand, up close and personal, and suffered the pain of what an offender would feel like to have a shot of pepper spray. And after we leave, y'all can ask Michael Robinson. He can give you a better uh, scenario of the pepper spray situation. <laughs> we believe we have the very best instructors in Galveston County, and we appreciate all their time and their effort that was put forth in helping us to become professionals in the law enforcement field. We will take this with, we will take what has been fed to us this last year and you continue to grow and develop into well-trained professionals in which is expected of us and now are part of us. Thank you very much from the class, cadet class number 88, and I'd like to take a little motto, where's my sister? The Marine, in saying, we are the few, the proud, the graduated class of 1999. Incidentally, Charlie Jackson uh, called today and said that he would not be here. He uh, got the flu. He just got some air conditioning on the range now. He had to go hot, cold, hot, cold, all that long. So I think he's down. One of the things that, that Ed Chambers mentioned, a couple of areas, for y'all's information, uh, what we have done in the academy, and, and Bob Williamson began and established, I think, a good foundation. But actually, the training in our academy is, is a little more involved and more specific than other academies, perhaps, in the area. For instance, one of the things that she mentioned, and, and I'm gonna talk about the certificates, is we require our cadets to go through pepper spray training or OC training, which is not a mandated requirement for the licensing agency. That provides them a certification so that when they go out on the street, they immediately can carry pepper spray. We also require our cadets to go through ASP, that's an expandable baton training. They get that certification also. That's also not required by the licensing agency. They go through a professional driving course, the same as the, the street officers go through, trained by the same vehicle that train the street officers, officers riding on the street. Uh, we have, as, as uh, Cadet Chambers mentioned, we have an expanded firearms program, and we actually do tactical training so that when they leave, firearms training so that when they leave the academy, uh, we feel like that not certainly not experts, but they have a leg up on the academy. So we have, uh, because of all that additional training, we have longer hours and more hours actually in the academy. And we're trying to to develop in, in the, the vein and the, the theory that Bob Williamson had, trying to develop a cadet that's more capable of actually taking on duty <coughs> immediately after getting out of the but we also encourage them to continue their training, and that's another function of Law Enforcement Training Center here at the College of Maine. Uh, I sort of liken it sometimes to getting a driver's license and then wanting to go out and race on the Indy 500. They have a little bit more work to do before they're ready to go full tilt in the community. But we try to give them the best boost uh, that we can at, when they leave. So. What I, what I intend to do is call out their names. I'm going to give them a stack of certificates, and you'll see it because they've earned them. And without going through each and every one of them, those are the certificates that, the extra certificates, I would say, that they earned by virtue of having gone through the academy here. Uh, the only other comment that I would like to make generally about this academy is it's a small academy, but to me it's a very big academy. And that is because it's the first academy that, that I started in as director of law enforcement training here at the College of Maine. It's also an important academy to me from the standpoint of their character. As a sergeant, 
calendar mentioned it's a very exciting job in law enforcement and I have to, I'm sure they'll tell you it's been very exciting this last year. Uh, I started teaching her about five years ago and I don't know of an academy that's gone through the number of changes that they've had to go through while they've been here. They started out a new director, they started out in a new building, we had modifications on the firing range, we had curriculum changes, we had instructor changes, we had scheduling changes, and they were able to adapt all the way through it. And I'm not saying that was on purpose to help them, but they managed to get through it and, and work with us and cooperated with us and adapted it. And I can guarantee you that's what they're going to have to do when they get out of here and get on the I appreciate y'all being here. I appreciate your support. I echo what Sergeant Calendar said, what Bob Williamson has said. They're just beginning, and I hope that in 10, 15, 20 years, all of you will have the same support that you have today for them, because there'll be time for you know,
love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. Only then.